So welcome everyone. We are starting our second theme and it'll also be in a four part series and it's on the evolution of blue. And uh, we're not going to go into a lot of the history of, of blue, but we're going to talk about specific paintings in um, some depth and how blue was used in those paintings. So welcome and I'm going to turn it over to Elena Maslova Levine. Uh, who is going to introduce the first painting, which is by Titian. Hello, everyone. And uh, our second theme uh, in our uh, grand experiment is uh, the evolution of blue, as Terrell has said. And Terrell has an appropriate background and appropriate dressing, and I have an appropriate wall color behind me. <laughs> so we are all about blue. And uh, since we only have four paintings to talk about, according to our plan, uh, I decided to start not with the very beginning, but with the oil painting on canvas uh, was born. And uh, one of the painters who was pioneering, I would say, the relationship with color uh, that we are now enjoying. And so it's a Titian. Uh, the, I'll start sharing the screen to show you the painting. So here it is. It's a painting by Titian, a great Venetian painter. It's the very beginning of the 16th century. And the painting is called Bacchus, Bacchus and Ariadne. And it's... Uh, uh, describes uh, the story is that uh, uh, after Ariadne saved the Theseus from the labyrinth, uh, she actually abandoned her on an island of Naxos. And there is this ship uh, to the left here. This is uh, her lava abandoning her. And, uh, but at this moment, when she, she woke up and saw that her lover was not there, the god of wine uh, saw her from his uh, chariot and was so fascinated by her and fell in love on first sight and jumped from there with his whole crowd of supporters. And there were even these cheetahs driving the chariot. And so she is initially frightened, but uh, this is actually her liberation and her elevation to in the beginning of a happy eternal marriage, happily ever after. And he threw her up into the sky to save her. Is that, is it, and she became that constellation of yeah. the sky. Yeah, so there, there are, as always with mythology, there are different versions of the story and one of them that he threw her diadem or her crown into the sky and this, it became a constellation. Or in another story, she became this constellation herself, which is probably not as tempting a proposition. <laughs> it's an interesting story, a story of initial fear and then salvation. And there is kind of this contrast between the blue uh, triangle, upper left triangle, and this mess of life and crowd on the right, which can be seen as intrusion or as liberation or whatever one's mood is for interpretation at the moment. And before I talk about blue, I uh, just want to say that the well context of this blue we are discussing here, there are two aspects to this context. One is that this kind of painting uh, is, has by now become impossible. The modern painter cannot paint such a painting, at least as, unless it's a, some kind of prestige or study or recreation. We just don't have this kind of vision, this kind of mythological imagination. Uh, we do, just don't have this sense of vision anymore. 
and on the other hand, uh, the blue, uh, the, the blue pigments used to be very expensive and actually almost or even prohibited from use uh, in such broad context. So in the sense, this was one of the first uses of blue in such a liberal way, apart from, you know, Madonna's and other spiritual meanings. And here, uh, uh, what is interesting to me is that while the painting itself is very much uh, situated in its period and not in modernity, uh, the use of blue is very much like we can do, like we do, like the, we inherited this blue from the, it is the same blue. I look at this blue and there is uh, nothing impossible about it, in contrast with the rest of the mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, the way he paints the color, the light effects in the sky, the, they were rather pioneering at the time. Uh, but now we have learned it. This is, this is now part of our toolbox, as it were. This light effects, this kind of thing. That, but one particular gesture which I find fascinating about it, it's not only this painting, it is repeated in many paintings of the time, how the blue of the sky is connected to the com figurative composition by the blue dressing. So the blue of the dress actually connects with the blue of the sky. And in a related uh, quality, it's interesting to see how uh, sky is not really distant here. Now we can, if we uh, zoom in here, out of her hand, we see that what we perceive is that she touches the, the, the cloud. There is no space between the, the uh, hand blends into the, into the sky, uh, which surprised me at first because, uh, well, I would paint it like there is a distance between a hand uh, and the sky. And I know that Tishan could have painted whatever he wanted to paint. So for him, apparently, this distance just, uh, he, he didn't think of the sky as something, as a plane above. It's the sky, this blue of the sky was the space present right here it, around figures, which is really interesting to me because it is one of these aspects in which our view of the world, our vision changed. Uh, so, yeah, I think these are my opening remarks. Yeah, and well, I wanted to show this constellation we talked about, uh, which actually, he, he hasn't yet drawn her diadem into the sky, as far as this story on the earth unfolds. But the constellation is already there. And it was, was by this time, this idea of putting everything from different time periods in the same painting it has almost disappeared. So this constellation is just the re last hint of this different relationship with time in which things which are apparently separated by time could happen simultaneously within the painting. I really appreciate how important this um, this blue was in this particular painting at this time because it wasn't very long before this that the uh, Lapsa and the ultramarine blue actually became available and then was restricted from use by the um, by the by the church for um, Madonna and, and other religious figures. And so to be able to take and put it in this myth and this 
um, story and use it so liberally across the sky is um, it, it speaks to me in this kind of way, which um, uh, there's something important in our ordinary, in a in our ordinary day, even though it's a myth. I'm fascinated about this um, passage of time that's in uh, painting and the sort of movement of uh, of of light and uh, and there's attention and a structure in the composition that um, it's a there's a powerful sense of movement of these of these figures uh, and so you it, you could you know even if you don't know the story you could make it up by by studying the the painting and it in this painting, it's the blue that actually holds the whole painting to get together in in one space. In this yeah. uh, traced exactly. here, here, and so it connects the whole painting rather than separating it. And for her, here in this whole area, it's just only her, even her body, um, flesh tones are cold, right? Uh, but this red thing, which kind of singles her out, is the uh, uh, is one of the main characters of the, mm -hmm. and then somehow links her right back into the painting with the like the red undertones of the of the browns. Um. Yeah. I also what well, this use of blue for the sky and for this distant landscape. So they're just starting to uh, use this atmospheric perspective effects in uh, the sky. So this distant part of the landscape is blue. Uh, and uh, so these, are, these were all like very novel ideas, uh, uh, very novel observations. And uh, this uh, realistic and well almost impressionistic depiction of light in the sky it was real real breakthrough in color yeah. kind of cutting edge yeah. yeah cutting edge yeah because yeah everyone could uh, so the depiction of the bodies this realistic anatomy which seems so out of reach for many painters nowadays and this blue of uh, the drapery uh, you can actually see so, so this is more or less uniformly blue right there is no uh, there is no uh, light effects no change of view within yeah. shadows which would we norm normally expect so this blue is fairly traditional this use of blue but in the sky, uh, there are all kinds of subtleties and variations. Although he experimented here, there is this lighter, colder blue and this darker blue. So uh, I think he was, for him, in contrast to us, for him, uh, this depiction of the sky was uh, kind of more of a new challenge for a painter than the depictions of bodies so it was more challenging so if you and i started this kind of painting uh the sky would be the least of our problems yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay well that gives us a nice start to now that for questions so. <laughs> i really forward to hearing from you okay <laughs>